Hi, this is Jamie Davis for Innovations in Patient Care, and we're here at EMS Today 2012 with the EMS 10 Awards again this year, and always some great innovators being recognized, and really unsung heroes. And one of the things that I'm excited about is a look at Wilderness EMS from a different perspective, from the idea of having your medical director be aware of and educated about what Wilderness EMS is if you are working in a Wilderness EMS setting. And so three doctors actually got together and put a Wilderness EMS Medical Director program together. And I um, also have with me here Dr. Seth Hawkins. And you're from uh, the foothills of North Carolina. That's right, outside of Asheville, Morganton, North Carolina. It sounds like you know, North Carolina should be a place that has foothills. It yes, just sounds, you know, we have it all, the ocean, the mountains. That's great, that's great. So what, what kind of spurred you to say this, there was something that needed to be done? Well, I really got into medicine through uh, wilderness medicine. and. Uh, I like to say that wilderness medicine is the original medical specialty. So the first time human beings picked up tools or saw somebody else in need and felt like they wanted to help them, they were practicing wilderness medicine. So Osler and Hippocrates and all these latecomers were all just really, you know, evolutionary from the wilderness medicine practitioner. So we think of it as a new medical specialty, but really this is the most ancient of medical arts. And that brought me into medical training, and I got into EMS in that way, partly because EMS really has those same characteristics. So back where I'm from in North Carolina, our rescue squad, Burke County Rescue Squad, has neighbors helping neighbors on the back of the ambulance, which is really what it is. And it's that same spirit of people with uh, you know, minimal to strong medical training taking time out from their daily lives as something other than a medical practitioner and going out to help. And uh, really that was what brought me into the idea of wilderness medicine as a niche where there was some things missing from some of the urban environments where we had EMS providers with much more enhanced medical direction, much more enhanced skills versus some of these neighbors helping neighbors out in much more remote areas that didn't have as much access to healthcare professionals. And so you were, you were enabling their medical directors to better understand what they were what they were facing is that is that a good way to put that that's exactly right it was two ends of of a problem you have uh, EMS personnel who may in rural areas or wilderness areas have minimal uh, actual full-on medical training like if they're first responders or EMTs without a robust uh, medical direction or medical um, uh, control apparatus supporting them in the same way once that medical advisor comes in, they may not be well attuned to the wilderness environment, which the operator is very familiar with because they've trained in a hospital in a big city. So what we've been grappling with is the concept of taking folks with great wilderness skills and maybe less of the uh, uh, state of the art for medical care or EMS, or taking people with really great EMS skills or medical training who may not be as familiar with translating that into the backcountry, uh, ski slopes, mountains. Um, and really what we realized was it was just a missing niche in the EMS world and the, the, the wilderness medicine world. And so bringing those medical directors uh, the, the knowledge they need has got to be pretty exciting. And I understand the response was very strong and uh, you're finding that a lot of medical directors are really interested in learning more about this program. It was tremendously strong and humbling to see who uh, showed up and uh, to try to predict their needs and try to match them. What we found was we had students who ranged from actual medical directors of national parks and who had very robust experiences to folks who showed up with little to no either EMS experience or wilderness medicine experience. So one of the big challenges of the course was building a universal curriculum that would, that would cover all levels of preparation and also cover all levels of operational environment from rural areas uh, to inner city areas that might have a wilderness component. And I know that it was interesting to talk to the three of you. Uh, you're from uh, the foothills of North Carolina, which is a rural setting, but then you have Dr. Smith in Jackson, Wyoming, hours from any kind of level one trauma center or any kind of specialty center. And then you also have Dr. Millen from Baltimore. Uh, just uh, seems like an urban environment, and yet he talks about the, the wilderness settings really close by to where he is. Uh, it's, it's really about uh, changing the way you think about what wilderness is. It, uh, it was a very nice cooperation because we did have these different backgrounds and I think you're exactly right. I think that a lot of what this involves is rethinking how we approach healthcare in certain, not only environments, but certain situations. So what we recognized was that many, uh, some of the largest cities in the world can become disaster sites or wilderness medicine sites overnight and unless we equip medical directors and uh, operators to actually know how to provide healthcare under those circumstances, we're really uh, doing a disservice to the patients. So unfortunately, 
currently in an urban kind of setting, you kind of fall off your protocol after an hour or two if you have not delivered the patient to a healthcare provider. But what we know is in a lot of wilderness areas and in a lot of devastated infrastructures from disasters or other circumstances, it may be hours before you deliver a patient over. And this is a, another way of thinking to add another arsenal of uh, tools to a healthcare provider uh, in the field to uh, deliver care under those circumstances. But maybe more importantly, to prepare medical directors to consider that and to consider those circumstances where even in their environment, which they may not typically think of as uh, wilderness, they may need to have austere protocols or resource deficient protocols that can be implemented under certain circumstances or in certain parts of their jurisdiction. Now we talked a little bit before we actually, uh, when we first met, about being willing and open to talking to your medical director and developing a relationship and some paramedics are, and EMTs are afraid to bother the doctor but in a setting where you think that there, when you see a need clearly it's incumbent upon me as a paramedic and a medical professional to make sure I make people aware of what my needs are. How would you uh, tell or counsel an EMT or a paramedic to approach their medical director about a need for some more understanding of wilderness EMS and wilderness medicine? To be honest, my hope is that this springs from uh, the medical direction side and one of the strong messages, I think, of the National Association of EMS, EMS Physicians and our course and a lot of progressive thinkers in EMS is that uh, EMS medical directors need to be much more invested in the field, in actual responses, and working side by side with their paramedics. So uh, the idea that you wouldn't know the name of your paramedic or they wouldn't be able to pick you up in a lineup is, is horrific. So in my opinion, that relationship needs to start from the medical director to reach out to the medics and have them know that this is a relationship and that it's uh, a, a one where the biggest priority is clinical care and doing the best thing for the patient. On the flip side, there'll be environments um, in much of the country where there'll need to be encouragement from the uh, field provider side to say this is a necessary uh, tool. And I think, in all honesty, the most appropriate way to, um, to approach it is from the perspective of the patient. And to say, uh, you know, you pull your medical director aside, you say, I have this difficult circumstance, I may be in this environment for much longer than I thought. Um, you know, whatever the clinical circumstances or environmental circumstances are that would lead to that blizzard, you know, storm, hey, I'm in this state park, what do I do? And approach it from the perspective that I'd like to make sure that I'm delivering the best care for the patient. I think one of Dr. Millen's underlying uh, concepts through this whole course that he's very good about uh, bringing out is that this is really all about the patient. We're talking about EMS providers, we're talking about medical directors, but I think anytime a medical director hears about a patient care issue where a paramedic or a, or a um, EMT wants to increase the outcomes of patients and the care that gets delivered, they're usually pretty responsive to that. But it does sometimes take a recalibration of their thinking about what the appropriate relationship is between a medical director and a provider and a provider and a patient. Well, it's nice to see that there's a focus on taking that uh, collaborative approach we hear about so much in the hospital setting, you know, as in my nursing side of things. You know, we talk about collaborative approaches to patient care. It's nice to see that moving also uh, outside of the hospital, pre-hospital setting, so that we can have that collaborative approach there too, because ultimately it improves outcomes for the patients, and that's what it's all about. The biggest problem and challenge to that in wilderness EMS is that so few hospital providers have, have any understanding of what happens in remote and austere medical care. So to them it's a huge black box where somebody got pulled off a mountain or they got pulled out of a river and they were taken in and what I find most often hospital providers don't realize is that something that to them is a pretty minor case of maybe somebody with mild hypothermia or a sprained ankle can be a huge operation involving multiple agencies, many hours, lots of risk to providers, and significant technical aspects which is invisible to the, uh, to the hospital provider. So if I had one wish for that collaboration improving between field providers and not just medical directors but hospital personnel. It would be a better understanding on the hospital side of the complexity of these operations and what rescue personnel go through in what may appear in the hospital medically to be a pretty minor condition, but which from a rescue standpoint and an EMS standpoint was a massive operation. And that's a little bit of a black box for them, not completely getting why it was so complicated. It results in some of these frustrating encounters between like a trauma surgeon and an EMT where there's just no, there's a disconnect between what actually because happens to the patient. A, an, no, a misunderstanding of why care was different than expected. Well, it's great. Again, congratulations for winning this award, and, uh, and I, I look forward to seeing more. Maybe uh, the uh, EMS director, medical director for Wilderness EMS advanced course. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. Great. Thanks. 
I want to thank everybody for checking out this video. And remember, you can find the audio portion of this video in Innovations in Patient Care, along with all of the other programs in Innovations in Patient Care over on iTunes. And of course, you can find this video in various channels around the web. But you definitely want to look and find all of the videos about our EMS 10 award winners here from EMS Today 2012. Thank you.